Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome again to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore how Christianity interacts with popular scientific ideas. Today, we're joined again by Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to ask the question, could aliens actually travel to Earth? Hugh, it's good to have you back on the show. Thank you. You know, so there's this uh, Area 51, which is a uh, very popular, uh, certainly pervasive thought that aliens have visited Earth and the governments are hiding it and keeping it there. So let's just, for the sake of this segment, let's assume that intelligent alien life exists out there. Could they actually travel to Earth? Short answer, no. Short answer, no. Okay, so let's, what are some of the challenges or why do you say, no, it can't be that way? Well, interstellar space is a dangerous place. There's not a lot of stuff there, but if you're going to be moving at high velocities, it's going to damage your ship. So presumably you need the high velocities just because space is really, really big. Well, it's because you've got to go a long ways. That's true. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, the idea of going uh, warp one isn't going to work. In fact, the fastest you can go through interstellar space with beings as large as us without killing them and destroying your craft is about 1% of the velocity of light. Okay. So if we're talking 300 light year travel distance, that's 30,000 years to get here. Well, I mean, just to kind of put that in scale, the closest star to us is about four light years away. Correct. So if you travel at 1% the speed of light, it takes you 400 years to, get to travel to the closest star. So it just right. gives you a sense. I mean, it really is fascinating how large space is. And so, okay, so we got to be able to traverse distances like that, which requires either really long times or very high speeds. Yeah, they've done experiments on mice and rats where they expose them to the radiation that you would get if you're just outside Earth's magnetosphere. Mm -hmm. And what they discovered is within about three months, the digestive tracts of these animals gets destroyed. And their digestive tracts are really good analogies for our digestive tracts. Mm -hmm. And so you put people on board a spaceship and set them outside Earth's magnetosphere, which isn't very far away. I mean, even a trip to Mars would be out of the question. It's actually even worse than that because, you know, yeah, getting outside Earth's magnetosphere exposes you to more radiation, but it's even worse when you get outside the sun's magnetosphere as well. So That's true because the sun protects us from a lot of cosmic radiation. So once you get out there, you're going to be exposed to that. And people say, well, can't they build an artificial uh, magnetosphere? We can't even conceive of a technology that would make that possible. And so, uh, and again, uh, the size of the thing. What we do know about making a stable magnetosphere, you need a really big body. So if you've got a spaceship the size of Earth, maybe it's feasible. Mm -hmm. Anything smaller, it's not going to work. Uh, you know, if you give humanity maybe a few thousand years to work on this, we're pretty creative folks. Maybe we could come up with something. Is we, it technologically possible to do that? We are very intelligent and creative and technologically uh, you know, advancing. However, no matter what, we're subject to the laws of physics. We can't invent a technology that's going to do us any good uh, that violates the laws of physics because we're constrained by the space-time dimensions and the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. and I think one thing that demonstrates that is Elon Musk's plan to send spaceships to the nearest star. Okay. He's aware of these uh, difficulties caused by the laws of physics, and his team has determined the biggest spaceship we can send with any chance of survival to the nearest star, not a faraway star, but mm -hmm. just the nearest star, the spaceship has got to be no bigger than 10 centimeters across. Moreover, they plan to send a thousand of these spaceships that are 10 centimeters across, presuming that half of them will be destroyed by the particles in interstellar space. So, and, so presumably they're talking about pretty high velocities to get them there in some reasonable well, amount of are. time. We're talking 10 to 20 percent of velocity of light, which means you can get there you know, within a 20, 30 year. Uh, OK. And, and so in that the, the problem you encounter when you're going that fast, apart from the radiation problems, is that any time you know, you, you now if you enter or collide with an interstellar piece of dust, the collision velocities are incredible, and they could just rip it, rip it apart and tear apart your ship. Yeah, even the protons and neutrons you encounter are going to cause problems. Right, and so it's nice that space is pretty sparse, but it's well, not again, that sparse. If you send a small enough spaceship, you got a chance. Mm -hmm. But the idea that you or I could go, we're a lot bigger than 10 centimeters. So, do you think it's possible to send uh, interstellar probes out to other planets or out to other stars and get information? I think we can. You think we can? We could, we can definitely send probes as long as we don't try to send life. Okay. Or maybe we could send a bacterium. Just don't send Jeff's wearing. 
because he's not going to make it. <laughs> well, my understanding of sending the bacterium is anytime we send something out into space, we send a lot of that anyway. It, it goes out at their area, area. <laughs> correct. The question is, uh, is, would it even survive? And the point is, even a bacterium is unlikely to survive a trip through interstellar space. Yeah, it really is a pretty hostile environment. I Very mean, hostile. You know, I know throughout, uh, you know, you look at the various uh, sci-fi flicks that are out there and space, I mean, aliens just are pervasive throughout the universe and traveling is not that hard, but it really doesn't give an accurate picture of just how hostile an environment the universe is for space travel. And we're not just talking interstellar space. We've yet to find a body outside of planet Earth where we could possibly survive. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, where are these things coming from? So... So, okay, so I, I tend to agree with you. The idea of aliens traveling here, that's not going to happen. So Area 51 has nothing to do with that. That's not the government's uh, covering up Again, aliens. Again, physical aliens. So right. We're talking non-physical aliens, that's a different matter. So, different question. Uh, just a brief answer uh, to give people something to think about. Do you think God created life somewhere else? That's possible. Possible. I mean, and we... Uh, and we know it's extremely unlikely he created beings like us just because we can't find any environments where that's even possible. But if we're talking a place where bacteria could exist, maybe even grass, yeah, I think that's within the realm of possibility. Well, thanks, Hugh. I appreciate your comments. You know, it really is, when you look at the popular culture, the idea that aliens are out there and they visited Earth seems just... Like, it's got to happen. But when you look at the physics of it, it's really, really difficult. And so the idea that aliens have traveled here is likely just physically impossible. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out two books that explore this topic that equip you to be able to talk about it well. Look for Hugh's book, Lights in the Sky and Little Green Men, and look for my book as well, Is There Life Out There? These will give you great resources to engage people that already want to talk about this fascinating topic and be able to share the gospel with them.